Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform where we talk with a variety of teachers, entrepreneurs, spiritualists, uplifters, givers, shakers, and serenaders. Everyone has a lesson to learn and a lesson to share. Let's use our life experiences to enrich someone's heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Through sharing our experiences, we can be a learning inspiration for one another. I'm your host, Chris Levins. Let's welcome today's guest. Today's guest is Dr. Annika Sørensen. Dr. Annika Sørensen is a medical doctor and stress management mentor. She specializes in health and stress strategies and has a solid background in Swedish public health care for 30 years. With profound professional, clinical, and scientific knowledge about the subject, she made it twice to TEDx. She is also officially certified by the Big Talk Academy and the author of Take Stress from Chaos to Calm and My De-Stress Diary. Today, Dr. Annika is helping stressed out business leaders slow down, reflect, feel less stress, and then ramp up and get more done and create bigger success without having to work harder. She does this through speaking, workshops, online courses, and mentoring. Let's give a warm welcome for Dr. Annika Sorensen. Good morning, good morning. Good morning <laughs> for me. Yes, good morning for you, afternoon for me. Thank you so much for taking some time out to be a guest here on Glass Half Full. We are so happy to have you today. Thank you. Yes, yeah, I'm the one to thank you. Oh, you're sweet. Well, we're going to jump right on in. I like to ask all of my guests this first question. I believe that our lives are in spiritual design. Can you share your life layout or blueprint with everyone? How you grew up, where, family lifestyle? Absolutely. I am born and raised in Sweden. I've always lived here. Uh, I would say that I had a very good childhood. Uh, uh, your, your whole family. I had the two, one sister and one brother at, when I was younger. Uh, so it, th- things were good, I would say. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, also Sweden was a, a peaceful country at that time. And, uh, and uh, there was a lot of hope for the future. Uh, and um, so, so that was fine. I had um, uh, then my, well, I don't know how much I'm going to go into to things, but uh, uh, when I was uh, 20, no, I was a little old. Anyway, my I got another brother uh, when I was 15, mm-hmm. uh, uh, my so-called baby brother. <laughs> <laughs> He's grown up today, but I still call him my baby brother. And then my uh, other brother, who was near me in age, he got uh, schizophrenia. So he was ill for 10 years before he committed suicide. Uh, So, yeah, and that was was a tough time for the whole family, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I wanted to be a doctor and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I didn't have the grades, so I had to do things to get in uh, some other way. So I worked and worked and worked, and I got my scores and everything. So when I was 29, I started to 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 uh, become a doctor. Wow, nice. Yeah. And then um, when uh, I was just about to go out, that was when my brother... Uh, committed suicide we got our first daughter and she had a very severe illness so she died uh, right there when I was going to start my life as a doctor you said this was your daughter yes that's what's my my first child oh I'm sorry to hear that 
and she was 10 weeks old. And I mean, she, she had this genetic thing. So it that's how it was. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we got three more today. Beautiful, grown up, healthy, fine, beautiful daughters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, uh, uh, and I started to work and I think it formed me quite a lot as a doctor with this experience of uh, losing my brother and my daughter the same summer, uh, just when I started to work. Mm -hmm. So I I would say that I have, and I still see my life as a very good life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But I learned a lot in that time. And that has formed me for what I do now. Wow. My gosh, sometimes we never know. We never know. No, we have, we, have, we have no clue what's going to happen to us. Right. And uh, then it's about how you, what you do with it. Hmm. So it's all about mindset. I agree. I agree. So you started off as a regular medical doctor, correct? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So I worked 30 years as in, in the primary health care, mostly. And, and you're seeing you know, all kinds of patients, kids, adults. Absolutely. Every, everyone, all ages, all uh, genders, all political <laughs> things whatever they all political beliefs all you know everything from real very biological diseases to psychological problems to social problems to uh, just the thoughts of life wow. i mean it goes all in there so it's uh, in that sense it's the best job in the world because you get to to get under the skin on people of people who trust you and they tell their story and sometimes they haven't told their story to anyone else so it's a very privileged great fantastic work job to have wow i want my doctors to say that that's <laughs> this is this is what we hope and every doctor is to say you're right Wow. <laughs> yes. And and the problem is not, the problem is that the, the organization is usually too tight and the time issues and all those things that are around. And of course also the pressure from people saying different things and trying to sell stuff. It's true. Uh, so uh, that that's my belief. Mm-hmm. So how did you make it over to dealing with stress management and moving into that direction? Um, That was about 10 years ago. You know, my kids were growing up and it was a very hectic life with three young daughters, uh, husband, family, house, everything, and a full-time job in in the healthcare clinic. Wow. And... uh, (laughs) I had I have seen stress uh, all, uh, apart from the one that I had back then, but I've seen it's in so many patients and they are overworked and they walk all the way into the stress wall. And I didn't want to go in there, uh, but I was feeling this is where I'm <laughs> heading if I continue as I do. Mm-hmm. So I actually took a course in stress management just to save myself. Oh, that okay. was my only goal for that. <clears throat> you know, ba- ba- in my back head, I knew what to do. But when you are in the hamster wheel, you just run, 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 and you don't really <laughs> reflect and think. So I didn't really reflect and think of myself, except that I actually did take this course. And that's where I got this, uh, got time for the reflection. And Mm -hmm. to someone told me, this is what it is. And I said, yes, I know. No, you don't know. You're not doing it. Okay, I start doing it. Okay, now I know. So that course was for over for for nine months. Okay. So I uh, we ha- it was two days uh, a month, full full time two days, and mm. then we had homework, and then the next oh. month two days. So I worked in between, of course, and that's when I realized 
this is what I need to ha- help my patients with. Mm. And then I tried to go back in the uh, in, at my work and start doing these things that I was told or <clears throat> that had popped up again in my in my brain. But there is no time for it. So that's when I quit my job as a doctor at the at the regular basis. I still work as a doctor. I work Monday and Tuesday this week, for example. So I do okay. jump in just to keep up with what's going on. Mm. And it's nice to do it because I love meeting these people. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it's just a, a good way to... To, to to stay connected with the real world mm-hmm. in my from what I where I am. Wow. So you're busy. So that's where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am busy. Well at least you're doing so the things that you love. So it's good. Exactly. Exactly. I've been I've taken some courses in you know this self help kind of things where you where you look into who you are and why you do things and what's important in your life and how we work how our brains work mm-hmm. and um, so i and and that is also both a help for for me to see what actually did happen them mm-hmm. way back then when in those for me very dark times some reflection yes <clears throat> a lot of reflection and seeing that it of course i didn't want that to happen but today i can kind of channel channel those that knowledge and that mm-hmm. uh, the way uh, back to to a good life mm-hmm. and help others to find the same thing that's it. Because I've been there, I see how see I see what it can be, and I've seen all my patients, of course, but I also have my own hands on experience. experience. Yeah, right. <clears throat> wow, wow. Can I ask you what is the common myth about stress that you maybe you can debunk for us? Uh, I think that people think that you can get rid of stress and live a stress-free life because that's what all the ads say. Oh, okay. They tell you that <clears throat> live a stress-free life. And I say that's not possible because stress is part of our basic biology. Mm-hmm. And we have our basic biology with us until the day we die. Otherwise, <laughs> we wouldn't live. <clears throat> so it's a natural thing to have the stress system working for you. Mm. And you have to find the ways to have it work for you and not against you. That's what stress management is for me. Wow, I've never heard it put like this. Okay. Uh, No, because people, or there is so much sold out there, they call those quick fixes, Mm -hmm. buy this app. Keep track of this app in your phone. Have this pill, some kind of tranquilizer. Some people drink alcohol. Uh, You have gadgets. If you have this one and hold it in your hand, you will be (laughs) stress-free. And on it goes. There are so many things sold. Or take this course and they do one little thing and say, that's going to help you. It might help you for the moment, yes, Mm -hmm. because you have to be helped in the moment to get out of the, so that you don't get into the panic attacks. True. But you have to change things in your life to have those moments come less often. That's real stress management. Mm -hmm. Now that makes sense. Yeah. So for me, the, the myth is that it's, you are able to do it to, to, to come to a stress-free level, that's not true. And you can solve it with quick fixes. That's not true. Hmm. Do you think that this myth began um, just for a, you know, for the selling point of these products and things that <clears throat> that's how it started? 
Yeah, well, yes. We haven't really talked about stress. Uh, in Stress has always been there. I mean, it started. we started 200,000 years ago to be the ones that we are today, and we have the same system. Mm. So it's been with us. But uh, when we talk about the 40s, 50s, and 60s, we talked about physical things in the workplace and physical things at home that were giving us accidents and, uh, and uh, you know, it, it gave it muscle ache and all those things that are in the body. Mm-hmm. And we talked a lot about that. And we did a lot of things around uh, making the environment better, uh, safer and all that. It's mm-hmm. all based on the physical body okay. things. And it's not until in the 90s, somewhere in the early 90s, uh, that we started to talk about mental illness as or stress management or stress things. Uh, because then uh, at that time, we, we, we had so much better, uh, it was so much better for the physical things. And people started to... Uh, to work too much or uh, it, it kind of changed in the society in the in the 90s mm. and that's where stress problems started to to come up on the surface mm. as a problem it's always been there so but we didn't really talk about it <clears throat> mm. and uh, then we have and it started with also with selling stuff at that time and it's been escalating ever since. And with all those gadgets and the phones and the IT world. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a different society and we are not made for that. And one thing is also part of how we function is that we do seek the quick fix. Mm-hmm. Because that's um, part of how we work, how our our brain works. So we do look for the quick fix, and then it, then we are easily easily sold. Mm, it's true. And I have I've met people who bought so many things for hundreds or thousands of dollars, uh, just to help themselves, and they never really got it. Wow. Mm. Yeah, this is a common because thing. Yeah, so uh, I think that the money has been a big part of it in these last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. So do you think it's something we can control? Absolutely. I mean, uh, from my, my perspective, we don't really need to buy anything except the help to... Uh, stay uh, accountable to ourselves <laughs> mm, okay <laughs> more or less <laughs> because and that's because how the brain f- works i mean we the, the brain we do look for the quick fixes as i said and we do look at what other people do and my problem might not be what other people's problem are even if they look kind of the same on the surface true but we have different lives and we have different things with us and different upbringing and different beliefs and so we don't need the exact same solution we have to find our own solution Mm -hmm. and that's the tough part here That, that that's what people need to work with to find their own solution and how do we find the solution um, we start looking at our life, lives uh, from, uh, I call it the helicopter perspective. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, because that's, uh, you have to look at all the things. I mean, I've seen people, I've had people coming because of really uh, tough situation in the work. They have a business and it's not working well and they don't really know what's going on. And why, why am I not succeeding? And when we 
kind of dig deep into it and see the big picture. Sometimes it's been the neighbor complaining about the garden. Mm. I had one of those uh, <laughs> complaining about uh, the, this client's garden. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing that was in the back head of that that client mm-hmm. uh, that disturbed all the thinking. Oh wow! Because we get kind of um, our uh, we 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 get what we think about, mm-hmm. and if you focus on something uh, irrelevant, we get something irrelevant. Because the, we can only have one thought at a time, so it kind of takes our energy and and capacity mm-hmm. if we think too much of something else. And when we got this client to talk with the with the uh, neighbor, the neighbor wasn't really complaining; he was just using words that my client saw as complaining, and oh, wow. it ended up with that the neighbor actually helped my client with the garden oh wow so so it's you you just have to take a big look at the whole situation mm. and take yourself talk out about it, it. Look, mm. talk about it make it in the open and most of the things that we fear will never happen so i mean we just have to talk about it mm. yeah stepping out of that comfort zone and you know just doing just taking mm-hmm. action you know Definitely. I yeah. always say the action is the key to just do it. Just one foot in front of the other and just try and yeah, go. Yeah, it, it is. It is. And um, and not to do what other... I mean, we are, we are um, herd animals, so we do like to do, do things that others do mm-hmm. and be part of the group. The group, right. One, and and you see this in the world today with you you like to be part of a group and some of the groups are not that good for anybody it's not so even true. themselves <laughs> but but they are still it still works from the same mechanism mm-hmm. you right they are put in or they are got into these groups because of something that put them together mm-hmm. and then they kind of just it goes in a loop that this is how it is and it's very hard to get out of it again. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. Caught in and, that cycle. Um, so, so um, it's it's easy on the basics. It's the the what do you say? The theory is very easy. Mm-hmm. The practical work is not so easy mm-hmm. always. <laughs> <laughs> it's and true. You're right. That's what that's what i work with i work i work with helping people holding their hands in finding out what's going on and how they can uh, kind of prepare themselves to make these things happen less often i love it i love it how great so let me ask what do you do to keep your own mental health in check are there any daily routines or anything <clears throat> of that that maybe you can share with us Absolutely. I think that we, the the basis of how we work as human beings, you see, I got, I come back to that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I figured is that that's the key. What do we need? We need regular sleep. We need regular food with good, good content in it. Mm-hmm. And we need physical activity. Those are the three basic things. And then we also need connection with other people. Mm-hmm. So I do daily walks. I start my day uh, with the walk uh, or do it in the in the morning time, uh, usually. <clears throat> and I am very cautious about what I eat and also that I try to eat at a regular basis. Of course, it's not always easy when you travel or when you're going to meetings and so on. But still, I make it. I make make it a deal with myself that I am going to try to get this right hmm. every day. And I do um, go to bed uh, this just about the same, t- same time every evening. And I try to get my seven, at least seven hours of sleep. All right. Now. We need seven to eight hours 
at a, at a regular basis to to keep our brain at its top. Hmm. So those hours. are the real base th- basic things. Those three to take care of yourself because that's where you get the energy to hmm. do what you not want to do and to stay to uh, be the guard for your <laughs> for the stress parts <laughs> in your life. It's true, right? <clears throat> It's true. So that's, that's, so I, and I also try to, it's not always easy, but to always have some time between meetings uh, just to kind of get off one subject and to get into the next one. Mm, that's nice. Uh, because uh, if we go from one to the other uh, back to back, it's, um, you, never get the time to reflect and we do need time to reflect because that's when we see what's needed to be done really so true definitely nice that sounds like a good good routine to put in place yeah and it's easier for me now when the kids are not living at home anymore Mm -hmm. and my husband is doing what I am telling him to. <laughs> no. But I mean, it's just the two of us and it's much easier. <clears throat> and I don't work regular hours at the healthcare because when you do, when you have that life, you just have to figure out how can I do it with the life that I have right now? Mm-hmm. And is there anything that I actually do need to change in the long run? Then start looking at it. Mm. It's not going to be done in 24 hours but in the long run that makes sense definitely can i ask you what has been one of the biggest struggles or defining moments in your life well that's what i talked about before that the 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 popping moment in my life was when my brother and my daughter okay 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 that that's where that's the thing that's the catalyst that started that's the catalyst for i think everything uh, even though and the fact that with you know i was in a black hole i couldn't it, i couldn't see mm. i couldn't see the light and then people started to call me or talk to me about i mean don't you now you're being a victim and I did not want to be a victim. Mm -hmm. I think that was the word or the process that got me out of it in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I had had people around who took my hand and took me for walks and took me for, you know, gave me food and all those things that I needed to just get my, get out in the light again so that I could see what I, had to do hmm. nice nice okay but let me change that's, gears that's then. the big thing in my life <laughs> okay <laughs> no you nailed it before you too i was like just in yeah. case it was there something else <laughs> that is very big there were two big events um okay let me change directions a little bit um Absolutely. and i want to talk about what four words come to mind when you think of yourself <clears throat> When I think about myself, what I would say smile, because I've always been, um, what do you say, almost accused (laughs) to smile uh, anywhere. Okay, that you're always smiling. Okay. I am just about always smiling. I'm not exactly always smiling, but that's just about every time and I've done that since I was a kid and I actually think I it was because I was uh, an introvert so that was a safe position for me mm. nice okay and I would say that I'm calm uh, and I've always been the person who is calm even in hectic situations on the surface, I'm calm. <laughs> Inside, it can be total chaos, but the calmness, I, I've sorted this out later on in life. <clears throat> the calmness on the surface is my safeguard so that I can work uh, with, this, with the chaos inside 
without people interfering. Wow, that's powerful. <clears throat> yeah, and and I didn't know that was the case, but I've been, you know, taking these courses and all being in these environments have helped me to see that's actually what it is because I have the same pattern if you look all the way back till I was a kid. Mm. Wow. People have always told me, oh, you were so calm in whatever situation. And I said, okay, yes, maybe on the surface. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and then there is, uh, and part of that is the, the, the next word that I would say, that's I'm slow. I am not, I could not be an emergency doctor. Because, <laughs> because I am not a slow thinker in, I can be witty and all that kind of things, but it's, I need to process things. My, if I get the, the possibility to, to reflect I will give a such a bet, much better answer. Mm, okay. <clears throat> and I, that's I know other people who can answer right away and they say the right things all the time, and that's just not me. Mm. And then, as a conclusion of all this, is uh, resilience. That's what people tell me that I'm a. I have a lot of resilience. Mm. <clears throat> nice. Do you believe that as well? Okay. Okay. It it took me, it took me almost ten years to get into medical school, but I was gonna get in there. Hmm. And you did, you did, and I did. Yes, and, and has had a whole career with it. <laughs> I had a whole career with it, and I've had a good life, uh, despite the the pit holes that I've been in. Hmm. Yes, this is what it's all about, right? Getting back up and continue on, yeah. and keeping going on. <clears throat> Definitely. Absolutely. Wow, these are great words. Smile, calm, slow, and resilience. Yeah, and they all come together. <laughs> I saw that when I was thinking about it. I saw they are all part of the same story, so to speak. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, that I, is I that think... spiritual design. It just happened. Everything's just wrapped up. <laughs> all ready for it and that's what people because i also like i said i've been thinking of what other people tell me uh, when they met me or in situations and they always said that i am so calm even when there is a lot going on hmm. wow. but it's just my way of saving myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's a good. It's good. It's definitely good. We need somebody who's at least is going to be able to hold it together, or looks like they're holding it together, because yeah. that's what keeps other people that they can see that you're calm. Then they feel like, okay, I can, I can absolutely. calm down too. So absolutely, it's an it helps. It it helps. It helps the world around me. Absolutely, mm, definitely. So it's a win win. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It is a win win. We love the win wins. We love the win wins. Uh, let me ask you about medicating patients. Do you feel, um, how do you feel about medicating patients who have stress? Is this something you recommend or is there another route you recommend first? Yeah, well, from our dis discussion now, I guess you would be surprised if I said that medication is the first thing <laughs> because I think that medication is the last thing. <clears throat> and uh, it is, it, to me, I mean, I prescribe medication to people, of course, mm -hmm. but it's when I feel that they need it, when they, when their own power is not enough, mm -hmm. or there are other things, um, what do you say, complicating it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, medication for stress in itself, just the stress, no, 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 no. Because what if you take tranquilizers, it kind of uh, turns your brain off and you become a slow thinker mm -hmm. and uh, you you cannot really see clear in like you want to. Mm. It's like when you drink. I mean, everything's not some people clear. think they are really they become really good when they drink have a drink. 
but they're not they are they are uh, it's it affects the brain in a way that's not good for them so if you want the first medication the thing that you should do is to take a deep breath instead oh that's, listen to that yes that's the first um, that's my quick fix hmm. to breathe you know, taking deep taking breath, breath yeah to breathe wow. <clears throat> or jump around a little because uh, moving our bodies also eats stress hormones oh i didn't know that <clears throat> so for stress for medication for stress is not a good thing if you do have long term stress it can get into a depression mm. and then you might need medication but depends on what where the depression is how hard it is or how, how deep it is mm-hmm. so the first pill <coughs> sorry no problem the first pill for for uh, depression or when you're in a low mode that is to take 30 minutes brisk walk that's the first pill 30 minutes breath brisk walk oh brisk walk okay mm. that's the first oh, all right daily 30 minute brisk walk is the first pill for um deep light depression before you even talk about pills. Wow. So to me medication is very good for the right thing mm-hmm. and there are a lot of things that are where the medication is doing wonders. Mm-hmm. And for that you need to go to your doctor. And uh, for everybody else when it's not that bad then start walking, start breathing start taking care of your life <laughs> right doctor's orders yes indeed absolutely yes indeed eat, eat right sleep right i mean take care of it because people don't do that it's true and then they complain that it's that they get stressed out or that they are not feeling well well you're not treating your body as your body wants to be treated mm-hmm. it's true and those are the basics you know, that's, they are. that's, that's not a lot. Just eating right, sleeping, you know, doing a little general exercise. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. said it before and I say it again. The basis of this is very simple. It's take care of ourselves as biology wants to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. It's the doing that's the hard part because our brain wants the quick fixes and and those are also built in 200,000 years ago because we had to survive on the savanna and we did need to have that time's quick fixes. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. So it's a, it's a lifelong, you can call it a struggle or you can call it a challenge. I yeah. rather call it a challenge. Yeah, or mission, right? <laughs> Just, yeah, this is what needs to be done. <laughs> You know, <laughs> if you want yeah, to live a long need, life, right? You want to live a prosperous life. You need to life. do it. Yeah, you need to do it every day for the rest of your life because it's going, like I said, the stress system, you have it until the day you die. So you just have to do the basic in this all, all the way till you take your last breath. Wow. Nicely put. Um, Let me ask you, do you think the youth of today use mental stress or um, general stress as an excuse? The young people? Yes. Um, No, uh, not really. It might seem like they are using it as an excuse, but as I think it is that the society today is so fast it's so much uh, must uh, must haves and all those things and those are uh, and the youth brain is not fully uh, finished or done or developed ready Mm -hmm. developed and uh, like I said before we have these ways of reacting that are 
reminiscent of how we were made 200,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, they have not the ability to, to uh, get up against that. Mm-hmm. And you have the peer pressure and all those things. So I don't think it is an excuse in itself. It is for real. Hmm. Uh, and it's even harder for them because they are not fully developed. Hmm. And I guess really maybe social understand. media as well plays a part. Social, yeah, this society, uh, social media, and all this total, uh, you know, we are bombarded with m- messages of how to be. So true. And si- since they don't have uh, the experience and all. Like when you're grown up, you can kind of sort it out. This is not important or this is important. Mm -hmm. And for them, everything is still, I need to figure out if it's important or not. Mm. And then you have uh, the peer pressure because my friend has this or this friend has that. And I want the same. And that's just natural. So it's it's rather a problem, I think, where the parents or the grown-up generation needs to help them to find the good path in life. I like that. They're, they can, yeah, there needs to be some type of helping hand. Um, to... in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nice way, because uh, in that, I mean, in the teenagers, you can, if you, if you uh, go against them, they will do the opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because you are a, a rebel in that time, <laughs> mm, true. so so you kind of have to do it with a very nice, in a nice way. Mm-hmm. Do you have many uh, young patients, like um, you know. in the healthcare clinic? Yes, I don't have any uh, young clients. Okay. Okay. My, cli- my, you my clients, my my clients are, yeah, yeah, those are the leaders, and those are uh, uh, sometimes very childish, <laughs> baby. <laughs> but, but, but that's another story. <clears throat> but in the healthcare clinic, I see a lot of them, and I see, uh, you know, their young people can come, and now that's just it's not stress in that sense. But I have had, you know young girls coming and say I have this little thing in my head in my face uh, you know a little blooper red uh, red kind of what people what young girls oh, like have in their face mm-hmm. pimple yes <clears throat> um, and uh, they come and and they are scared of cancer oh wow okay and and uh, yes and I tell them no this is just natural and it's you might get more and, you know, all those things. And and then I realized they have two families because the parents are divorced and there is one family on the mother's side and one on the father's side, but they have no grown-ups to talk to. Wow. Because the grown-ups are so busy in their own new families. So there might be like four, two, mod- two so-called mothers, two so-called fathers. Uh, and... And they go with this fear of this being a cancer when it's just the simple, basic thing that every youth has. Wow. Because they, we don't talk between the generations. And also when when I was young, we had the grandmothers and the, and the grandfathers. Yep. And the, those generation yeah, gaps are so much bigger today. Mm-hmm. So true. So so the young people come with fears for very basic things that and I see that a lot in the healthcare clinic. Wow. For things that is that their parents or sometimes they come with the parent being very worried about something that is very normal. Wow. <laughs> because the parents are kind of what do you say <clears throat> pampering their teenagers all the way up. Mm-hmm. It's so true. You're right. You're right. There's a lot of that. So, so it, it's it's uh, it is life. Life is complicated. I mean, life is what it is. 
<laughs> You're right. It is. It is what it is. You're right. Where do you see your work in five years from now? Or where do you hope to be? In five years from now, I, you know, I'm already so-called old. <laughs> oh, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> so <clears throat> I hope I will still be here working mm-hmm. with the same things that I do today. Okay. Uh, maybe a little more selective. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, work a little less. Oh, okay. Okay. But I still, I still want to be speaking. I still want to be mentoring. I still want to have these work groups. Uh, Yes. Okay. So where you are now, but just uh, escalated a little bit more with maybe um, a sense of deciding about how you, your, your, how you want to be working. About your yeah, <clears throat> I mean, work a little less, mm-hmm. and maybe be able to. This sounds maybe bad, but to choose, be able to choose a, a little bit more of what I am gonna take on. That's nothing wrong. No, that doesn't be- sound bad at all. Mm-hmm. You should you earn because, that <laughs> because I uh, I do want to last long. I want to be at least a hundred, and I plan to work at least until 90. All right. So, <clears throat> I do have some years left. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yes, yes, yes. That's and I believe about. that if if you if you have that plan in your mind, you're going to reach it. Yes. I love that. I love that. <laughs> if you could use one color to describe your life, what color would it be and why? Yeah, I think that is a that's a hard question. I, I don't really see life in colors that way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, if I see what I usually wear, I wear dark blue. <laughs> <Very boring. laughs> but that's where I feel comfortable. Okay. And then I, and then in my logo and in my company, I have this maroon burgundy red dark red color Mm -hmm. that i love Hmm. but i still want to wear the dark blue (laughs) okay so is it it's a color that makes you feel comfortable is it a color that makes you feel um that makes you appear stylish in do you feel extra Mm -hmm. you know happy when you wear it it's it's a color where i can be me okay I like that. I like that's, that. That's what it is. Uh, I can wear very pink, but I am very aware of it all the time. So that's not being comfortable in it. Mm-mm-mm-mm. So with this color, it you feel very comfortable in it. So And the burgundy as well? It's something that I, symbolizes yeah, I something that. for you? Yeah, well... <laughs> It was, I'm not interpreting colors because that's, that's, it's not in my mind of that, but I, I like the color (laughs) and it goes well with the dark blue. Okay. See, look, it just naturally, see, I always feel it's still that spiritual design. Certain things we're drawn to, right? Certain things we don't, we can't explain why, but something, it just works. It makes you feel some type of way and... You know. Yeah, it, it feels like my my brand is maroon or burgundy color. Hmm. It's I like that. I like the what I see hmm. when I see the things done for me in my colors. There you go. What and then, then I feel it's my. This is my company. This is what this I is can me. stand for. Yeah, this is me. Yes. Well, you answered the question. There it is. We got those yeah. colors. Yeah. <laughs> You know, most people feel it when you think about it. You're like, I don't know how am I supposed to represent, but it's all it's it's there already. And when we t- step back a little bit, like you say, from that helicopter view, we get yeah. a chance to see like, oh, it's actually been there the whole time. And so it's it nice to to hear you come with up uh, with uh, that. Uh, yeah, and some people would say, do you see it in bright colors or in in dark colors? I mean, it's that's not the thing. No, for me. Yeah, no, it's just it's just color, you know, something that makes you feel a little something in some positive way. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. I think it's nice to think about it in a different way about color for that. Awesome. Well, I like to close with this question. Do you feel is your glass half empty or half full? Well, my glass is always half full or more. <laughs> 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 if I may say so. Yes, you this is your your answer is the only answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. We like that. Half empty or more, you said. Well, ha- half full. Oh, half full. Or more. Half full, excuse me, half full or more. Half full or more. <clears throat> Excellent. It's, it's it's um yeah. It's it's good. Mm. Good, 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 good. I like it. I like it. Um, Can I ask you, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Yes. Well, that would be uh, be in the now. That's where you can think. That's where you can reflect. Uh, If you are in the past that has gone, you can do nothing about it. It's just a thought in your brain. And if you are in the future thinking about what can happen, then I can tell you most of that will never happen. So you're worried (laughs) in vain. So where you can actually do wonders is in the now. So that's where you aim to be there as much as possible and take a deep breath to get there. Yes, Dr. Annika, I love it. I love (laughs) it. Thank you. Can you tell everyone how they can reach you if they're interested to find out more about you? I guess the easiest way is to go to my website because there you have information of what I do and also a contact page. And that is askdrannika.com, A-S-K-D-R-A-N-N-I-K-A.com. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Annika, for being a guest here on Glass Half Full. We are so glad to have you in today. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Oh, the pleasure is mine. We hope to talk to you real soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. And thank you to all our listeners listening in to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform for everyone to share their life experiences. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Levins. Please subscribe, follow, and rate this podcast on Apple Music and Spotify for more learning experiences. Until next time, know you are blessed. See ya!